to uh, let this go for just a minute. It says we're live up here, but we'll just wait for a minute. Let's see how we're live up here, but we'll just, okay. There. <laughs> okay. We'll just uh, wait for a minute or two here. Make sure everybody is in and ready to go and whatever else. How's everybody doing out there? My audio okay and everything? Can everybody hear us? As I keep talking so you can hear me. Say, so can you hear me? And I'm quiet. Okay, good. So, all right, good. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Everybody can hear us out there. Um, just literally learned about this whole thing of this this false cult today in the comments. Somebody posted in the comments. Um, forget who it was. Forgive me for forgetting who you who it was that posted. But they said, "Have you heard about this?" No, I haven't heard about this. So, going to watch a video or two here and, and read an article. And um, so, just crazy, absolutely crazy. And again, just confirmed a lot of what I stood against uh, over the years. So yeah, here's Oliver. So he hasn't been around in a while. So yeah, you see your mouth open. So I'll just wait a couple minutes here just to make sure everybody can find the thing and whatever else here to live stream. Then we'll get started on it. Uh, You have, to, you have to wave back to Sister Chantre's son. Wave. There you go. So. And I trust everybody's doing good in the Lord and, and um, staying by his word. A lot of distractions out there. Definitely a lot of distractions, things to get our, to get our eyes off of the Lord and, and His Word. So, uh, certainly looking forward to seeing the Lord on the catching up of the body of Christ. I'm going to be doing a big sermon on that coming up. I haven't preached on it in a while, so just to give everybody a little heads up on that. Um, so. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're getting up there pretty good in, in uh, people watching. I guess everybody's finding it now. So, um, All right, we're going to get started then. Uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to uh, play a video, and it, and uh, I need to do some commentary through this. Um, thankfully, I've you know I've been around for a while, and I've I've seen how things work. And um, so, if you're newly saved and whatever else, this is to warn you about how cults run things. And uh, these people are definitely a cult. Um, it's really sickening. So, what I'm going to do here is um, trying to think I guess I'll put this uh, maybe over here I guess let me just get some things situated um, I'll stick this thing over here I'll be right back with everybody and there's the stream yard thing. Okay. So what we will do now is we will yeah, in your mouth thing. Um 
Hi, everybody out there. Good boy. Nate, I always like to see where everybody's from, you know, Connecticut and Alaska, and Edmonton, Alberta, and Canada, from Virginia. I know where some of you are from, friends of the ministry and things. Um, mm -hmm. So, there you go. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let me do the share screen thing. Share screen of this one. Okay. Now, hopefully, we'll have to do a little test here just to make sure the audio comes out all right and everything. Um, England, Northeast PA, Spain, Belgium, of course, that one. Um, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, UK. Iowa, up there. Sweden. Sweden. All right, sounds good. Okay, let's get started here. Tell me, uh, I'm going to do the, the volume here and let me know if you can hear the volume. Can everybody hear the volume on the video? Just want to make sure that you can hear it before things get started. Okay, good. All right, we'll get we'll keep it going then. Okay, let me just pause it for a minute. So far, it's kind of a, okay, you know, they're out in front of a church building. What's going on here? You know, uh, I just saw the, uh, up here, uh, Duncan, I guess, I, I think you're the one that sent me the link, or asked me to look into this. And so I'm looking into it. And this is the first video I've seen. So I kind of, going into it, I thought, okay, they look kind of Mennonite, Amish, sort of a thing. I don't really know what this is. Somewhat Baptist. So, yeah, somewhat, but more, like more, more Amish, Mennonite because of the black. Right. So just uh, be ready. Okay. Uh, use your discernment here. Let's continue. Think about your soul. Think about one day we will be in eternity. Don't think about it. Are you doing this because you have to? Do you not feel God dealing with your soul? Go ahead, officer. Pastor, well, this is a uh, summons here for the Church of God, arriving on the 27th of December, 2020. Hold on just a minute. Are you talking about the Church of God? Because we know it's not the building. The church of the okay, let me pause it. Because these people, the people with church buildings, they always do this. It's the church building until they get caught, and then they say it's the building. It's, it, excuse me, it's the people. It's not the building. They always do this every single time. Uh, if if it was the people, you wouldn't have a church building. Okay, it's it's it just always irritates me how these guys do this, and then they hold on to that. See, it's it, it's the church building, it's the corporation, everything else, and then they get in trouble and they say, oh, it's just the people. We don't we don't hold to the building and everything else. Yeah, crooked. 
And we'll see why this is important as we continue. The, the corporation, the organization, no, sir, that's not the church. See, the, the police officer here says no, it's the corporation, the organization. And now I don't know exactly, but more than likely they are tax exempt. Most of these church buildings are. And so the police officer is exactly correct in upholding the law. He's 100% he's in the right in what he's doing because they are a registered tax exempt organization under whatever the codes are up in Canada. I don't know, but whatever they are there, and, and these guys are in America too. So, you know, um, I don't know what the, the code would be in, in, in Canada. Maybe one of you knows, but the whole point is the police have every right to come there and tell them this is unlawful. You have to stop this. It's government property. When you go under tax exempt status, they have a right to come in and tell you what to do. Let's continue. The church is the people. That's why they're here. This is the so church. Do you want to serve? Sir, 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 we're charging all these people. Sir, sir, we're charging all these people, not the building. It's, 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 it's the church. Which is the church? Can you tell us? The organization. No, sir. <laughs> the organization. The police officer is exactly right. He's exactly right. Under there, what he's seeing as an officer of the law is this is an organization. It is a corporation. I'm here to enforce laws on the corporation. He could care less what the people have to say or what your beliefs are. If you come to the government and get a license, okay, or permission from the government, that's all they see. And they are 100% right in enforcing laws against that. Again, I've studied law on this, this whole issue here. Way back when we had a house church and, you know, we studied this thing extensively. So. I side with the police. You side with the police, yeah. Me too. All right, let's continue. What is the church? Point. You point to the church. Officer, help him. Point to the church. Which is the church, sir? Point to the church. The building? No, sir. No. That's where you're mistaken. Yeah, that's where you're mistaken. It's not the building. Um, I can. I, I'm not going to go and search through the guy's sermons, but I can almost guarantee you, I could prove in his sermons that he probably says that you need to come to church, you need to be in church, whatever else. They'll preach it as the building. The church is the building until they get in trouble with the law, and then it's it's not the building; it's the people. <laughs> Cracks me up. Let's continue. You're fighting against God. The people, this, this is the church. This is the church. I'm only a part of it. I'm their leader. This is the church. Can you point to that Bible and say you're charging them? You to read that in Do that. Point to them and say you're charging the people. If this is here, this is for the court date of uh, February 11th, 2021, at uh, 480 Sunset Drive in uh, St. Thomas at the Provincial Offenses Court. Okay, sir. Um, it's uh, letting the 10.1 sub 1 of the Return of uh, Reopening Ontario Act, posting event exceeding the number permitted under the uh, that 10.1. Going against the Constitution. Sir? Are you going against the Constitution? I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm here, I'm the court officer. First of all, sir, please identify yourself first and last name, please. And from which? My, my special counsel, Jeffrey, I'm with police. What's your last name? I'm um, Jamie is my first name, Jeffrey is my last name. Jamie Jeffrey? Yes. Jamie Jeffrey from the Elmer Police. Yes, go ahead, sir. Okay, so this this year the summons is uh, like I said for the offense of the 10.1 sub one of the uh, Reopening Ontario Act, post an event exceeding the number permitted under the continued section 7.02 order. Did we okay. transgress the Constitution? I, I'm I, I'm here to give you this for the what is this? What is this summons? For what? For the Provincial Offenses Act. Is, did, we go, did, we, did we do anything against the Constitution? I, I'm not talking about the Constitution. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the Constitution, sir. I'm here. I said, did we do anything, anything against the Constitution, sure. which guarantees us the freedom of religion, the yeah. freedom of gathering? Right, right, right. Okay. Now, see, this is this again is textbook how a cult leader brings in their people and makes them feel really uh, we're part of the right thing. We're part of the right cause. They'll, they'll do this inflammatory type of stuff, and you see the people, and they're getting all riled up and everything. Yeah, we have constitutional right. Well, you waive that when you go with the government licensed building like that. Very much the same as if you go into the military and you swear, you, know, you go through all the 
you know, swearing in stuff and whatever else. Of oath and and, yeah, you, and you take those oaths, you're giving up some of your rights when you go into the military. So you can't say, hey, this is against my rights. This is against the Constitution. You know, da -da 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 -da. you can't do that. You gave it up willingly. These people, when they got their building, they gave up their rights. You know, uh, plain and simple. And, and I thought that the Christians, early Christians met in, in secret a lot of times when the, the government was corrupt. They didn't boldly go out and stand before the Roman authorities and say, you have no right to stop our meetings. And, you know. And they didn't form a church building and stand up against the lawful authorities saying, you're a organization, you're a corporation. We have full legal jurisdiction to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Mom, and listen to the in the Molokali. <laughs> and they're using political activity to say that they're right and they're not. Because okay. if this group of uh, building worshipers were right, they wouldn't need to say, You're fighting against God because it's an act of man. Their organization is man's doing. God did not tell them to create a building and worship in a building and then fight the government for doing what uh -huh. the government has authority to do right and the 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 whole thing is too um what these the reason that people get buildings is because they want to have that uh credibility with the lost world we don't want to be some weirdos worshiping in our homes and whatever else that's why they all started building these church buildings you study the history of it so you know and then they leave the catholic church and then you know oh you're protestants now and Oh, where's your building? Where's your neat churches at? Well, we can build them just as good as you. And they did. Well, let's continue. Yes, answer me. That's right. Please answer me. Did we do anything against the Constitution? This is not. This is what the Reopening Ontario Act. What's the Reopening Ontario Act? Does it stand or the Constitution? Do we have religious freedom or do we not? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm here to give the peace Okay, you have religious freedom. But you do not have the freedom to, to get government permission to have a building. And then when the government says shut it down, that you can't come along and say, no, we're not going to. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's 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 weird. But, you know, we'll, we'll see more things as we continue. I don't want to keep cutting into the thing. We'll get through this here. And I'm not here to, to, to get into Have you thought about what you're doing? All right. Have you listened to God, what he's telling you? Are you thinking about the oath that you have sworn? You said you would protect the Constitution, right. and you said you would protect the Constitution. Right. Right. When will you do that? Right. When will you do that? Right. When will you join us? When will you do that? Take the piece of paper. I, I'm your, not obligated to take the piece of paper. This is your opportunity to explain in court and give your defense. Uh, I'm not obligated to take the piece of paper. Yes, you are. You, Your system belongs to the state. You came to them for, for permission to exist that's just the way it is you know you can't flaunt your constitutional rights after you've given them away through it's, articles of declaration through a corporate entity or mm -hmm. any other business entity yeah you the moment you create articles of declaration for a okay. business whether religious or not you give up your normal rights and the government says you will do what we tell you and if you say oh no we won't well then you're bucking their system. And I fully side with the Canadian government to throw the books at this man-made organization. Mm -hmm. This is a good cop, bad cop, publicity okay. stunt. You need to continue. I don't want to. No. I'm not I have nothing to explain. I have the Bible. I have the Constitution. I have done nothing wrong. <laughs> Absolutely right. nothing wrong. Right. 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 When right. will right. you recognize okay. When will you recognize that you're dealing with God, not with man? When will you recognize that? Right. Well, God's not giving us the problems right now. You are, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Speaking through the officer. <laughs> God's not giving us the problem right now. You are. And look at the reaction. Oh, you know, because, see, he believes he is God. And and you say, oh, now, come on, brother. You're getting a little bit. Wait till you see what these what these nuts actually believe. I'm going to be playing a video right after this one, and you will not believe. He is an apostle, okay? One of 12 apostles, right? I mean, we're talking some crazy stuff that these people believe. They believe that the seventh trumpet of Revelation has sounded and that they are now the, the 12 apostles and things. 
Ooh, these these people are wing nuts. Okay, they're one of the worst groups I've ever seen. So, yeah, this this is this is called a media stunt. This is called a cult leader right here, getting his people behind him. They're all just standing there, kind of in shock, watching. Oh look, he Pastor So and So said we'd be persecuted, and we are. This must be what he talked about, and we need to join together. And, and you know, so typical. Hi everybody, new buddy. Or like, hi to everybody. That's new, new buddy. <laughs> um, hi to all the new people that are coming along. By the way, thank you. I'm seeing a lot of people saying hi. Just just joined. So, hi. All right, we'll continue. Because God is not here in person, and I am. Thank you, sir. All right. So you tell the judge. No, sir. That's yours. Okay. So just take <laughs> back down there. That's Jumping out of the way. You know where it is. That's your court date. Is that littering? Thank you, sir. That's okay, about what you're doing. That's literally. Anyhow, I'll I'll stop them butchering the old hymn there. Yeah. And they sing a lot of new music too, so don't think, oh, they just they're conservative and they sing all the old hymns. No, they don't. We've looked into some of the stuff that these nuts believe, but anyhow, so there's that. Now let's actually see what these people believe. There's a this video right here. Come on here. You might have heard of Henry Hildebrandt in the news recently, a pastor from Aylmer, Ontario, who claims to be fighting for the people's rights. But who is Henry Hildebrandt? And what is his Church of God restoration about? Many people have supported Hildebrandt in his protests against the government, but do not know who he is or what his beliefs are. Publicly, Hildebrandt identifies himself as a pastor, but in the cult called Church of God restoration, he is known as an apostle, one of eleven, under the leadership of their chief apostle, Ray Tinsman. Brother Hildebrandt's done some wild things. I'm talking about Brother Henry, the apostle. He's done some wild things. Good. It's been good. There's been some wild. That brother be out preaching, holding the Christian flag. <laughs> I find it interesting that these guys basically are dressed like Catholic priests, but you know they act like Baptists essentially. Um, yeah, I've I've come more and more to realize how much mind control really happens in the Baptist system. And how they can easily draw in Mennonites or Amish or other groups like that. They can draw them in and, and they'll do that. I'm, I'm, I'm. And I've been in the churches and I've preached in the pulpits and I know that it gets the flesh going. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. No, it's not. Okay. Show me the scriptures where they're they're yelling and screaming in the in the services and, and getting up and down and preach it, brother. You know, pull the Bible, preach it, amen. You know. Show me the scriptures. It's not there. Okay. And I know I, I fell for some of that stuff. And I was in those places. And they get, oh, well, I'm getting a lot of amens. And, you know, it gets the flesh going. That's what this whole thing is. And it gets very dangerous. And you have these guys like this. I mean, this guy's beyond the whole Baptist church, you know, man of God thing. Just watch. With my blessing, by the way. Hildebrandt, a seemingly soft-spoken preacher, can be an angry speaker at times, like when he spoke about a member who left his congregation. Hildebrandt actually wished this former member would have a car accident. The day that they left, we severed our relationship. And it tore my heart in that sense, but I knew it had to be because I need to go back. They, someone had a, had a fairly deep place in my heart. Okay, we severed our relationship and haven't talked since. I have no interest, I have no interest in, in furthering or nurturing uh, what they're doing and wishing them all the best and, and hoping that, no, I don't wish them all the best. I wish that their wheels comes off. Well, I realize, I realize that this could be interpreted as hate speech. He discourages his followers from having pictures of their relatives who are not part of their cult. He says he does not want pictures in his house of one of his own sisters, who is not part of this cult. He okay, just to say it really quickly, Amish and Mennonite, you know, again, growing up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, they would call um, pictures graven images. So you can't have any photos at all 
That's why they don't want their picture ever to be taken. So the Amish mostly. So you know, Mennonites, if there's money in it, they'll have their picture taken. <laughs> so and Amish too, some of them. But the uh, continue. He tells his followers that they would be better off having pictures of dead people in their phones than of their own relatives. Listen, don't you ever dare show me a picture of the next life's living life. We have, as saints, zero interest in hanging up the family pictures in our homes with our backsliding folks on there. Do I really want, do I really want to walk in my house that God has given me? Do I really want to walk in the house on a daily basis and admire these wicked people? My dear sister Trudy, if you're listening to this message, I have no picture hanging in my house from you. So I would say, I would say, if you have a phone and you definitely want to have a picture of the backslidden person on there, then this is what you do. Go to the funeral home, the next funeral that you go to, take a picture of the dead person in the, in the casket and put that on your WhatsApp for your relative so that you can keep on saying it, seeing it. Uh, are, you, are you following me? So just so I will remember that they have died. Okay, and then at three o'clock in the morning, you can't sleep and you want to look at a nice picture, bring up the WhatsApp picture and look at the person in the casket and see if that helps you sleep. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I want to be reminded that this person has died, has died, has died. So if any. Okay, notice again the Baptist thing that they do there. Again. They'll emphasize something and they'll yell it and they say it over and over and over, just driving it into the brains of their people. And they'll do it until they hear enough people saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. And you're in there and you get that group thinking, you're thinking, everybody else is amening, I guess it's right. And, and, and then the guy will go on to some other point. It just, ugh, stuff makes me so sick. Continue. Anyone is permitted. To have any information on them, I'll tell you where to bring it. Bring it to the ministry, and the ministry will sift it through and see what the relatives should know of them. Hildebrand also claims he can forgive sins, and that he can decide if he forgives a person's sins or not. But I have personally experienced in the very recent past where we are praying for somebody to be saved, and the Lord spoke to me during prayer and tell them and told me, tell them their sins are forgiven. I said, Lord, I, I don't, I, I, I don't say that. I, the Lord said, I said, tell them, tell them that their sins are forgiven. I said, Lord, I will obey you. So I looked at the person. I said, your sins are forgiven. Already? I said, yes. God said, I was supposed to tell you, your sins are forgiven. The Lord said, if you forgive their sins, they are forgiven. <laughs> You want to stand up against the apostles at this time? Let me tell you something. When the Lord tells us that your sins are not forgiven, they're not forgiven. But I'm praying to God. You won't pray to God. And, and if you're not here this morning and you're listening to me and you're rebelling against the church, you will have to come by Brother Henry Hildebrand. And you will have to ask Brother Henry Hildebrand if you can be forgiven. <laughs> Woo, yeah, I had to come and ask Brother Henry Hildebrand. I saw one of your Brother Henry Hellbrand, branded or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, you have to come by him and, and ask if your sins can be forgiven, and, you know, if you're not in his church. But I thought the church was the people. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I guess we kind of switched that there, you know. That sounds like a spinoff of what the Amish do, you know, excommunicate the mm -hmm. funny person. Shunning. And Mm -hmm. You have to apologize. Well, they don't yeah. say it that way, but you know, Hack did the same thing too. Yeah. Let's continue. He says he is fighting for freedom, yet his followers do not have the freedom to have a Facebook account or watch a YouTube video unless it's from their own cult or they get permission from him. Mm. He enforces a strict dress code on his followers. Do his followers have the freedoms he claims to be fighting for? That's yeah, interesting. Exactly. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Say what you, I just have to say, say this. Um, they're not allowed to have these accounts, you know, and of course it has to be done through their system. Well, that's what the military does. When I was deployed mm -hmm. in 2010, the military told me in these words, you either have to have a YouTube, not a YouTube, excuse me, a Facebook account 
and or a cell phone so we know where you are at all times. What you just heard about this Satanist activity is a spinoff of what the military does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because um, uh, the new IFB, I remember seeing a couple of times that these guys are you know, bragging about going and speaking at military installations and things. There's a lot of tie-ins between the two. Um, again, understanding uh, psychological warfare, psychological operations, um, a lot of these guys will go undercover. And I don't think he is because he's sort of a Mennonite preacher or whatever. But some of these guys, you know, there's all kinds of psyop stuff going on. And, and a big part of it is to make people like us look bad. But uh, thankfully, that's that's why we try to encourage brethren to be as weird as you can. So we're very hard to copy. You know, <laughs> so we're we're not uh, we don't you know, they're you know, I'm rather disturbed that they have beards like me and that they'll wear a black vest or something. That's kind of irritating um, because I wear a black vest, but I have my red and black one on the day. So, hey, I would be worldly and flashy. So would I. You know, I mean, I'm wearing flashy colors and patterns. Yeah, look, look, see, isn't that flashy? Yeah. Oh, I would be it's, excommunicated. It's kind of earthy though, so I don't know. You might make it. And then Dad I mean, would have a black vest and then white salt and say goodbye, go on a black vest uh -huh. and white salt. Take a breaker, yeah. Yeah, I know one of you said earlier about that the head chief apostle guy looks like Robert Breaker. We'll see him again here in a little bit. <laughs> That's <laughs> he, what I thought too. He does. So let's continue. In reality, this fight for freedom is a publicity stunt by the Church of God Restoration, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. this cult believes in a prophecy that in the final days, people from the outside, including from other churches, will flock to their church, which they claim is the one and only church you can find salvation in. With this publicity stunt on YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp, this cult hopes to recruit the people who join them in their protests, including congregants and pastors from other churches. In spring 2020, the cult initially started to make masks to give away to get some publicity, but then decided that protesting would give them more publicity and followers. <laughs> you gotta love that. Funny how the new IFB did the exact same thing. Yeah. You know, at first it was just, oh, there's, there's a pandemic. We have to, you know, make masks. We have to shut our church down. You know, I did a whole live stream on it, Stephen Anderson's church before that whole thing fell apart. But, you know, <laughs> it just cracks me up. Same thing. They're making masks. And then, oh, now it's a, it's a, it's tyrannical, and we have to be against it and everything else. It's violating our constitutional rights. Come on. <laughs> oh man. Here we go. Church of God Restoration was founded by a man named Anne Lane. Lane, who died in 2011, claimed to be of a line of prophets going all the way back to the Old Testament. Members of the cult have also claimed he was the fourth angel mentioned in the book of Revelation and that people are saved through him. I want to tell you that Brother Lane held the seal. Amen. Amen. And if, if you, you remember, you remember, if you want to get saved, you got saved his way. Or you wasn't saved. Well, Brother Lane, I think this is—I think this is what the Scripture says about salvation. No, come here. <laughs> right. You get in my way. And I'm right, and you're wrong, and, and and you know what? He was. <laughs> yeah, amen. I got me a preacher just like a Jesuit priest. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. And he, it's weird—he does the same little duping delight thing that Robert Breaker does. You know, <laughs> same backdrop yeah. as Anderson. Andersnake does. This weird. Here's the chief apostle back here. This guy here is the chief apostle right there. You know, so it's impressive. You know, it's actually younger than I am. It's kind of funny. But uh, let's and let's continue. What are you saying? And then there would be a real songus kamongus and so uh, on. Yeah. Let's continue. And if you want to be right. You had to be right with him. If you want to be right, you have to believe what he believes. After Danny Lane's death, Ray Tinsman became the leader of the cult. Ray Tinsman and the rest of the leaders elected themselves as 12 apostles, claiming that part of the Bible is actually talking about them and not about Jesus' original apostles. I want to share with you real quickly that the names of these apostles of the Lamb are not talking about Peter, 
James and John and the original 12. It's not talking about that. It's talking about a different 12. It's not disconnected because there's only there's one ministry, one church, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay, notice again, this is classic mind control within the Baptist system. Classic, the way that they do it. They'll raise their voice and they speed up the tempo. Every single time they're trying to deceive you, they'll start to raise the voice and they'll start to talk a lot faster. They do this. It's, it's just text. Carnival it preaching. Yeah, carnival preaching, which I preached on many years ago. Let's continue. And he'll get louder and he'll get quicker. So there is no disconnection, and we don't do wrong to refer to the original 12. But in context, it's not talking about the original 12. This is talking about another 12. Do you want to know the names? One of the names is the, the only name, the name that is above all names on this creature. Creature of God's creature, the governor of the world. It sounds just like a Baptist church, the governor of the world. They're calling this Ray Tinsley or, you know, whatever is it. The governor of the world? Chapter and verse? Sounds like a bad attitude Baptist blowout. Yeah, that does. Or new IFB or whatever you want to yeah. make it. It's just insane. Continue. The judge of all this world is the chief apostle, our very own, Brother D. Ray Tinsman. <laughs> and in the other corner, we have, you know, it's, what is this sports announcing? The Brother D. Ray Tinsley, 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 you know. <laughs> Can I say one thing? Notice that his name is D. Short for his first name, Ray is his middle name. What is his first name, and why is it not being used? His first name's Devil. Yeah, you have to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. Sounds That's, like a sports announcer mm -hmm. announcing the entrance of a team or a competition <laughs> well, from like, ancient Rome. Sounds like some kind of UFC or boxing thing. Let's get ready to rumble yeah. or whatever. <sighs> His middle name this, this is probably here. stupid. Yeah, middle name's probably <laughs> stupid. There you go. All right. Give honor where honor is due, and I believe that I'm due some honor. Listen intently to that which I have to deliver to you. And if tonight you consider me as your leader, and I trust that you've looked beyond Washington, D.C., and I trust you've looked beyond Ottawa, and I trust you look beyond Mexico City and other capitals of the world. Not by now, through the preaching that you have heard in the past few years, that you've looked past that and you realize that you're real leaders, not only your real leaders, but the leaders of the world, and that of deliverance won't come through Washington, D.C., and won't come through Ottawa or won't come through other capital cities of the world. But if there's going to be a deliverance to rise, in this time, it's going to arise by the leaders that are in front of you. <laughs> amen, amen. You know, <laughs> it sounds like a military pep talk to me because the language is very similar. Yeah, the leaders in front of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what rank are you wearing on your collar again? Yeah. Let's continue. The cult's leadership went as far as telling their congregants to pray in the name of the cult's apostles in a sermon preached by John Friesen, one of their elders. I began to pray and I said, Lord, I come to you in the name of our chief apostle, Brother Ray Kinsman. The cult formally prohibited members from seeking medical help and still does to a large degree. In one case, one of their apostles, Elizabeth Ockel, claimed that God had told her that he would heal one of their members who was ill, and if he wouldn't, then God was a liar, and if this person would die, she would send a text message to the other apostles, and they would raise him from the dead. The Lord showed me that he's going to heal Brother Dietrich. He said, if I don't do it, I'm a liar. 
And when he told me that, I said, Lord, you're going to look real bad now. Unless you do something here for us. I think you did myself already. I said, if Brother Dietrich dies, I'm going to send a text to the apostles. We're going to raise him up. This person passed away a few months after that claim was made. Person passed away a few months after that claim was made. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Apparently you can't read too good. Let the woman learn in sons with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Hmm. Apparently the old apostle there didn't get that. If it is, this is a true saying. If a man, if a man desire the office of the bishop, he desireth the good work. The husband of one wife. Well, but that's right. She's an apostle. But uh, how does that work? Apostolette, perhaps? <laughs> no, that would be discriminatory. I they mean, have to say apostle. <laughs> yeah, you know. And, and you know, if he doesn't get healed, then God's a liar. Well, then she, I guess she just said God's a liar. And by the way, again, there charity ministries in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, uh, Denny Keniston, he was a hack trained, Hiles Anderson College trained um, Baptist. And then there was another guy, I cannot think of his name, he was Amish. And they made they joined together and they made this this charities ministry thing, and it was almost identical to this kind of nonsense. I dealt with them face to face. They were into the whole post-trib, post-millennial, we're bringing in the kingdom, you can lose your salvation, charismatic healing, the whole thing. They're all into that stuff. They get they just get sucked into this. The Baptists and the Amish and the Mennonites, they get into this whole thing. So, yeah, Apostle Liss, Apostle Triss. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, let's continue. The cult's apostles also claim to have the authority to unsaved members of the cult. This is their process of excommunicating and condemning members to hell as a form of discipline. The cult teaches that pastors have more spiritual authority over the wife and children than the husband. This is proven to be a useful weapon for the cult. There is a common practice of separating families when one of the spouses is a non-believer or leaves the cult. The pastors strongly encourage divorce in such cases and even help to get restraining orders whenever possible. In 2019, the Apostle Stephen Hargrave went to northern Mexico to pressure a local congregation to give more money to the apostles and indicated that the cult was headed in a direction where the apostles would manage the money of the members. And so tonight, we came to get some money. We plan on flying back tomorrow with our pockets full of your money. That's the Lord's. Amen. Ain't a lot of shout now, but it's true. Now, remember what I said. You don't have to give it. But if you don't give it, we're not going to call you saved. <laughs> if you don't give it, we're not going to call you saved. Reminds me Ooh. of that uh, nut, charismatic nut that said, you send me money, I'll send you a beautiful pista. Yeah, there's some video we saw years ago. <laughs> you know, crazy. Let's continue. And again, remember, all right, all right, come on. You're not you're not training to be a charismatic preacher here. <laughs> um, but remember again, they speed up and they yell when they're trying to deceive. Always do it. Here we go. So how much money are you talking about, brother? A lot. <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm, I'm being serious. I'm talking about a lot of money. Hundreds of thousands. Tonight, brother? Tonight. I told somebody today, I told somebody today, you're not saved. I just told him that. And then guess what else I said? I said, if you want to get saved, you got to write a check, a big one. I said, I, I, I thought you can't pay for salvation. You can't. That's just a good start. <laughs> Can't pay for salvation, but that's a good start. How is that different no from uh, the Catholic Church um, accepting money for people who are trying to literally pay for their sins with money? What's that called again? Uh, indulgences? indulgences, yeah. How is that different church. from an indulgence? What Catholics are a little bit more slick about it. They're not quite as uh, blatant as these heretics. Hmm. Let's continue. And put some of that money in the apostles' feet. What will happen when you do that? Well, then that will be at the, at, the, at the convenience of the apostles. Well, what will happen with my business? 
That's none of your business. In November 2020, the leaders announced a new plan. They asked their members to take out all their savings, including retirement savings from their bank accounts, sell their houses and buy smaller ones, and hand their money over to the apostles. They were told that their chief apostle is better at managing a business than the members managing their money themselves. It's time we put our money where our faith is. You need your George Washingtons. If you believe this, if you don't believe this, then please don't do what I'm about to say. But if you believe this, you need to empty out your IRAs and your 401ks. You say, well, if I take them out, then I'll have to pay a penalty. Get it out. It's time to go for broke. So yeah, it can make us a new campaign, go broke for breaker. <laughs> yeah. It looks similar. I have to say that. I just can you believe this stuff? It's just my goodness. Time to give them out. Lay them at the apostles' feet. You don't have it anyway. <laughs> With one little fair swoop of a pin, you won't get it either. And if you're going to get it, you better get it quick. Because soon, in one little move, it won't even be there. We need to sell some of our homes. Just pause it for a minute. Um, I remember literally there was a Lampeter United Methodist Church down Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and they literally had a campaign on for growing their church, and they were saying the exact same things. Sell your house, get second, third jobs, you know, get a smaller home, do whatever you can to make the church. Operation Stretch is what it was called. So this isn't, I mean, this is, these cults do this in all different denominations, everything. That's why I'm so rough on church buildings. You have to get out of those things. Right. It, it just it's so bad. You know, it really is. But uh, we'll continue here. Amen. Good. That's downsides. We're not going to be comfortable here anyway. It's only trouble from here out. Amen. Your thought of living a luxurious life. OK, let me just pause here for a moment, too, because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I feel so bad for the people there. Um, quite frankly. If if they wanted the truth, the Lord would lead them out of that. Um, I, there's a sense in which I feel bad. I feel bad for the children because they might be forced to be there and whatever else. But the adults, I have no sympathy for them. Um, you know, you can't. There's an old saying: you can't con a man unless he himself is crooked. Okay, you come in and you say, "Hey, here's quick money. Here's this. Here's that." A good, honest man will say, "Quick money? What are you talking about? No, I have to work hard for my living." These people wouldn't be there if they weren't crooked. I better say that one more time. These people wouldn't be there if they themselves weren't crooked. So, so be careful with, oh, let's pray for them. I feel so bad for them and whatever. They're getting what they deserve. Um, that's just the truth of the matter, brethren. Um, people that are in church buildings and whatever else, they're just, well, you know, I'm not leaving. I can't leave and whatever. Well, then you get what you deserve. Plain and simple. So I just wanted to say that, you know, I mean, we have to re remain Bible believers and you can't go against the scriptures and the scriptures aren't saying, oh, you know, pray for the people that are, you know, in this kind of satanic stuff when they could so clearly. I mean, they have King James Bibles. They could read. I mean, it's it's so bad. I mean, you know, anybody that stands there and takes this. You know, I mean, come on. This is crazy. Continue. It is over anyway. You're going to belong to somebody. You're going to belong to the king. You're going to belong to Bill Gates. Come on. Or you're going to belong to these folks. Yes, sir. Not suggesting you to go homeless. I'm not even suggesting you'd have no comforts. But I'm suggesting to go for broke. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
In March of 2020, Jacob Braun, one of the 12 apostles leading with their congregation in Steinbach, Manitoba, sent out an audio message to his congregants, denouncing many of the cult's false teachings and evil practices, stating that he was no longer willing to be part of those practices. Soon the audio was leaked, and Ray Tinsman found out about it. Braun was then summoned to a long interrogation session, his wife and kids were temporarily taken from him, and he was forced to record another audio and videos, stating that he had been wrong about the statements in his original audio message, that he had been possessed with an evil spirit, and had been living in adultery, which according to people aware of the situation, was not the case. Jacob Braun was of course not allowed to return to his local congregation, and was prohibited to speak to anyone about the situation. He is believed to have been ordered to move close to the cult's headquarters in the USA to receive punishment and retraining. This is a summary of what Henry Hildebrandt and the Church of God Restoration Cult are about. Please alert others. And that's what we did. Um, now, actually, look at their website here. I just I did see a comment here. I want to make a point about this. Could someone please remind me what is unbiblical in Robert Breaker's teachings? Thank you. Um, absolutely. Uh, Robert Breaker preaches a false gospel. Robert Breaker says you do not need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You just simply believe, which is essentially um, hyper-Calvinism. Because hyper-Calvinism, you're elected, you're chosen, and all you have to do is you just come to the point of where you understand that. It's just all mental. It's all up here in the mind that you don't have to actually call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. When Romans chapter 10 plainly teaches that. And there's plenty of other scriptures as well. Um, these guys are all about there's no repentance, you know, and, and whatever. Um, and there's plenty of other things wrong with Robert Breaker. He's lied about the, the book of Enoch, um, claimed it's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. I mentioned in the Bible, excuse me. It's not. Um, there's a lot of things, false prophecies and things said that, that Paul tried to prophesy and, you know, and, and, you know, the rapture time and, and it failed and whatever. So Paul's a false prophet, apparently, according to Breaker, we have a video on him. So please stay away from Robert Breaker. He seems legitimate because he, he basically stole uh, Peter Ruckman's work. And so he's, he's very dangerous, very dangerous. Stay away from that guy. Um, just to make that clear. Um, let me get over here and uh, zoom on this thing a little bit here so we can read it better. This is the Church of God. This is their website right here. Um, greetings, friend. You may wonder who we are. I'm really wondering that now. We are not a denomination, but we are the Church of the Living God, as we read about in the New Testament. Uh, okay. Uh, and yet they don't follow the New Testament, with which we plainly saw there. The sight of the saints of God has never failed to bring relief to a fellow pilgrim. Aaron was glad when he saw Moses. The soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Paul, when troubled on every side, was comforted by the coming of Titus. They report that the saints remembered him with a fervent mind. Even Christians upon their first meeting have the witness of the Spirit, that they have met one who with themselves is a partaker of the common salvation. Though strangers and pilgrims in this world, they are not foreign to those of God's household. This is surely true with those who walk in the fullness of the counsel of God in this latter part of the evening time. We who have heard the sound, look at this, heard the sound of the seventh trumpet and have fallen into the ranks of God's restoring work have an unseverable, unseverable bond. Okay. Our heart's cry is blow on, O seventh trumpet. The last call of mercy has produced and will continue to produce the gathering together of a people that are willing to forsake all and stand on the word of God alone, <laughs> which they don't do. The restoration of the household of God is in full operation and his children share a holy bond of one heart, soul and mind. OK, and they are not part of his children. I can assure you of that. But what about this thing of the seventh trumpet? Um, again, just read the Bible. Revelation chapter 8, verse 2, here. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets, right? And then they go and they, they do a bunch of things here, but we'll jump, jump down. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. 
Now, you know, I slept pretty sound last night, so maybe this happened overnight and I didn't see it, you know. It miraculously uh, reappeared again. You know, we'll, we'll see. It, 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 it didn't physically happen, but symbolically it happened, you know. Or maybe the seventh trumpet happened and, and the other ones, you know, God kind of skipped the other ones. <laughs> uh third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and men died of the waters because they were made bitter fourth angel sounded third part of the sun was smitten yeah how in the world did you get to the seventh trumpet i mean what in the world so um i'm trying to think six angels sounded and uh I'm trying to think of when the seventh angel sounds, but uh, not think of the just trying to skim through and get it. Fifteen. Okay. Um you go through all of this stuff here, the whole way to chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there, was, there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. So apparently that's, you know, I don't know why they didn't just have 24 of these, you know, apostles or something. I guess they'll, uh, 24 original apostles, then the 24 or excuse me, the 12 original apostles and then the 12 new ones, apparently, which include two women, you know, which is kind of funny, you know. Um, you know, yeah, we'll get into that here as we continue. But let's show this a little bit more, you know, our prophetic lineage. There you have Ezekiel. And then it goes to Daniel and Haggai. And I won't go back to the, you know, Abraham, Moses and some of those others. Um, Zechariah, Malachi, John the Forerunner. Okay, Anna, let's throw her in there, and then you have Peter. Nice little Catholic painting of Peter there, <coughs> and uh, then we have John and Paul. Kind of interesting how John came before Paul. But then you have Jan Hus. What, what, wait a second here. So you go from 67 AD to 1369. Um, kind of missing a few centuries there, aren't you? No. You know. Then you have Savonarola. Um, okay, William Tyndale, Menno Simons. Got to get that little uh, thing in there for the Mennonites. John Wesley. Uh, major problems there. Uh, John Fletcher, heard the name, but I'm not real familiar with him. Daniel S. Warner, again, don't really know much about him, or Charles E. Orr. Warner created then, his own branch of the Church of God. Then you have Daniel W. Lane. We'll check out this nut here in a minute. And then finally, D. Ray Tinsman. Tinsman. Okay, so yeah, where's that thing at about the uh, um, where's the thing about the the what's the name of the other guy that one that founded this official cult or whatever? Oh, the guy that looks somewhat Amish. Yeah, where's that thing about him? Uh, we have to read that one part. It's classic. Oh boy, I have it saved to PDF. Good. Maybe photos. No. Okay. okay, let me just, if you don't know where it's at, I'll just, I'll try to find it here. Um, so, yeah, there's a woman preacher there. That's, that's important. Oh, they have blowing shofars. <laughs> Typical. So, it's hard to believe people Maybe fall. Maybe governance? Governance? Well, church government. government. Yeah. Yeah, there they are. Holiness there. Oh, yeah. Two women are part of the presbytery? 
mm -hmm. chapter and verse. Yeah. I already shared the verse of scripture. Oh, here it is. Cool. We found it. Daniel Lane. Uh, where's that one part at? I just had to. Uh, yeah, right here. Yes. <laughs> and above he, that, too. Yeah. You know, he thrashed Babylon severely. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, sure. Okay. He thrashed Babylon severely. Well, Mystery Babylon in the scriptures is the Roman Catholic Church. I don't think this guy thrashed the Catholics, you know, dressing like a Catholic priest. Yeah. So I just had to show that. We aren't going to bother. In the sentence, uh, he accepted no salary and died with few possessions. That yeah. sounds a lot like everything went to the church or the organization as vow, the pack. Vow poverty, the whole thing. They, yeah. they always do this. Yeah, that's there. So, yeah. Um, but there you have the apostles. Two guys here, they're brothers. So, you know, good good business there to get into. We're here for your money. <laughs> Where does the King James Bible say that a woman was an apostle? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, see, we're adding to the scriptures now. See, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. The double yeah. fun is to read the volume. Uh -huh. Where's that found at? In the Bible. Well, yes, but where? What chapter and verse do you know? Um, first, you're forgetting yourself now. Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Right. Mm -hmm. So here you have more of the apostles. And there's the nut that we watched earlier that we'll be reading an article about him here in just a minute. But um, yeah. And then you have the prophets. They have prophets too, not just apostles, but they have prophets. So, Female on that line? Yeah, there's a, another woman there. Mm -hmm. Elder. Mm -hmm. uh, another female. Another Hildebrandt. Line. They're probably related. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, another female one, Trudy. Mm -hmm. Doreen, that's another woman. Cynthia, mm -hmm. that's another woman. No, another one there. Linda, another woman. Julia, right. another woman. Elvira could be either another woman right there another woman Marinella Tamara another woman so a lot of their Sherry. work is being done down in, in Mexico which is kind of odd and then there's the Philippines mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there's any in Maine which is a good thing yeah. and there's one from Austria and another woman from the Philippines yeah so well, there you go General Ministerial Body of the Church of God. That looks like and it looks like some kind of a graduating class from some Jesuit school or something. Yeah, or a bishop or something. Like meeting this. or something that was held with the Jesuits. I mean, crazy, absolutely crazy. And I and I will guarantee you, guarantee you one hundred percent that there's perversion in this group. Guarantee, I guarantee it. When you do this type of stuff, they're perverts. I can promise you that. All right, one more thing to go through here. This is uh, an article. Let's see if I can zoom in here so we can read this a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So there you have the guy from the video right here. Back and in the there early is 2000s. when he was younger. Mm -hmm. All right, what are, we, what are we reading here? Well, uh, go down below that video. Thing. Okay. Check out the first sentence. The first time he was in the news. This should tell you the whole attitude behind uh, this Henry Hildebrand mm -hmm. hireling. Uh, he claims that we're not a rebellious, defiant people in an interview in 2001 with the London Free Press. And we don't want to be in conflict with the government and its agencies. But yet you saw them in conflict in their. Yeah. First video. Mm -hmm. Very strange. Then it says 20 years later, Hildebrandt, now with the title of church apostle. How do you go from unknown nearly 20 years ago to all of a sudden a church apostle? That's rather odd. Mm -hmm. um, he says in a WhatsApp voice message. We are living in times of fear. We are scared the police will come to our door any moment, and we don't know what they will do. 
Yeah. Just hold, hold on a second here. But, you know, he's also a conspiracy theorist fighting a perceived worldwide effort to destroy humanity's freedoms. Well, it is. But again, see, they have to spin it now. They have to say, you know, there's preachers actually like myself that have fought it from the very beginning. You can watch my baloney virus video done, you know, a year ago, essentially. I knew the thing was a scam from day one. It was just ridiculous. Violated all kinds of medical procedures and, and whatever for handling real disease. So, you know, and all these guys went along with it for a while. And then, and then oh, when they see the tides turning and that there's Christians and others that are standing against it, oh, now they're going to join their voices. And so now the media has to, to spin it that, oh, they're just a bunch of nuts like this. Because they're Irritating. playing good cop now <clears throat> that it's become a movement mm -hmm. against this whole COVID situation. So they were once back in the shadows not doing anything and all of a sudden we're playing good cop yeah. at the right time of course public relations yeah. stunt and so uh the bible says in proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 um about the fear of man bringing a snare you know i'm paraphrasing but yeah. you know the verse and so he says uh we're scared the police will come to our door well if you fear god why would you fear the police coming to your door at any moment? Yeah, and you know, rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Right. If you do that, which is good, you'll have praise, praise of the same. I've had the police call on me on a number of occasions, and it never turned out bad, mm -hmm. ever. I always shook the officer's hand as they walked away. I get along just fine with the police. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I'm not going to get some kind of government building and then gripe and complain because the police come and try to take away my freedom or something. I, I know better. Then the article talks about how this church that this hireling founded. Yeah, I need to know where we're going here next. Scroll down. A church still clinging to its doctrines, it goes on to mention, but trying to expand and gain attention amid a pandemic that's also fueling the effort. Knows the timing, okay? Still trying to cling to its doctrines, but yet trying to gain attention. They're playing good cop in this whole scenario. Mm -hmm. This is a civil affairs psycho psychological operations stunt look at the odd timing of their behavior okay as we go on you'll see why i say this and of course it's similar to the new ifb doing the same thing mm -hmm. with uh mahia recently doing his little fiasco yeah um then it goes on to say the church and its leadership especially Hildebrandt, always have sought publicity to gain followers, they say. Mm -hmm. People are admitting this guy is all about getting his name out there, just as Robert Breaker tries to do. He copies other people's behavior and actions, and he says, I believe the same way. Well, this Hildebrandt is just a spinoff of Breaker from that perspective. You know, copying others mm -hmm. to gain media attention. This is a civil affairs public relations stunt. But that desire to gain followers has prompted the church I'm down here. Yes, to open its doors and abandon some of its principles they contend. Very interesting because what they stood for in the past, they have to change now in order to fit with the movement that's been created by this um, whole COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. false flag operation. Then it goes on to say uh, a quote from a former Indiana Church of God member, Adam Pamer. He says, they have been prophesizing for years that in the end time, there's going to be an influx of people coming into the church by the thousands or by the millions. Again, this whole cult is twisting the scripture about the multitude of people from all nations, peoples, tribes, you know, getting saved during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're spinning that with a satanic twist. Mm -hmm. And this former member is basically admitting to the fact that this cult is, I believe, using replacement theology. Well, in a sense, yeah, but what this is another cult tactic that they say, we're being persecuted right now, but God's going to do something great. God's doing an amazing thing. He's bringing in revival. He's going to make a major movement through this whole thing happen, is what they're doing. Um, Liberty Baptist Church I used to go to and, and actually preach there down in Pennsylvania. They actually had a wall on the one side of the congregation that was built temporarily so that they could 
break it out and and turn the church even bigger. Jack Hiles actually preached there. Jerry Falwell preached there as well. And it was it was huge in its day. And they went through all kinds of splits. It was, you know, 30 people going there in a church that could seat probably a thousand people. Um, but yeah, it's it's just typical, typical stuff there. They that's how they keep people in. You know, our numbers are small, but we're going to grow. You're going to see God do great things here. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you give enough money. <laughs> yeah. To prove that you're saved by giving money. Yeah. You have to give money in order for you to be saved. Chapter and verse. Mm-hmm. Then it goes on to say the church of God restoration. Where? They're likely hundreds of Christian congregations with the words okay. church of God in their name. The church of God restoration in Aylmer belongs to a branch of now. 30 churches didn't they say earlier they're not part of a denomination that separated the 1980s from an older organization known as simply as a church of god there was a church of god cult building in my hometown growing up mm-hmm. so again these cult people are a spinoff of the original church of god denomination they're still a denomination yeah they all try to claim that the title the church of the living god or the church of god or whatever else from the scriptures um, which is a is it is a biblical thing, but you know, um, you know, um, yeah, you'll see the similarities with hack here in a moment. Uh, right underneath that title there, spanking the kids. first came. Yes, way down. This uh, Hildebrandt cult essentially first came to public attention in two thousand one when family and Children's Services of St. Thomas, I guess the CPS equivalent there in Canada, and Elgin removed seven children from the home of a congregation family over concerns about the children being struck. Wasn't there something similar from the hack system about a professor mm-hmm. physically abusing? Yeah, um, Combs. I can't mm-hmm. think of what his first name is. Esther, Esther Combs. I don't think it was Jeffrey Combs. But it was Esther Combs was a daughter. Um, but Combs was one of the, the professors at hack. And he actually had beaten his daughter terribly over the years. And it was, there was a lot of them. There was a uh, bus ministry guy with hack that uh, was molesting children, um, took them on a camping trip and was, you know, molesting them and things. He actually went to jail for it. And Jack Hiles gave him a soul winner of the year award after he was in prison. Um, So I'm so familiar with this whole system. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And then look at the other, the other similarity between the hack professor abuse situation but what brought family services to the battle was on was an october 2000 report that a child's injuries weren't receiving medical attention similar thing to the professor combs scenario with hack Mm -hmm. then it goes on to say in 2002 founder daniel lane announced children could be taken to doctors when they initially said we don't believe in medical intervention from essentially the outside world and so it's interesting because of this whole scenario, the hack type scenario that occurred, um, they decide to change their protocol. Mm -hmm. This is very typical again of Amish. And again, to differentiate, I say don't go to a doctor because they're corrupt and and terrible and whatever else. Uh, They do pharmaceutical drugs and things. There's a lot of problems with the doctors and the medical establishment. Um, But I say, you know, If you can find a natural doctor or something like that, that would actually be good and and tell you nutritional advice and whatever else, and certainly go to that. I'm not against chiropractors. I'm not against things like that. But what these people do is, you know, again, having been raised around the Amish, they would have children that would fall down and bust their head open. And they're just, you know, they'll just take them up and lay them in bed and and hopefully things work out or whatever. I mean, uh, my actually my oldest brother's wife, my sister-in-law worked at a medical clinic where Amish would bring their children in and she said some of the stuff that you know oh you know that their they, their arm isn't getting any better well, how long was it cut and, and infected well they, they cut it about a month ago or something i mean it was that type of stuff that's what's going on with these things they're not advocating natural health they're simply saying don't go at all and you can if it's not healed then then god wants them dead or you know it's it's messed up mm-hmm. you know big time but anyhow continue then the, go down just with that picture. Each person or family can make their own choice, obviously. They're playing both sides. That statement shows the fact that they're playing both mm-hmm. sides by saying, well, at one point, no medical intervention from the outside world, so to speak. Well, okay, now you can because we've decided to change our protocol. But each person 
our family can make their own choice. Well, you're playing both sides. And that just proves it right there. Mm -hmm. Then you go down to below the picture, um, grabbing attention, how a judge saw it, which I think is rather telling. Starting with given Hildebrand's penchant right there for raising publicity, the judge, the legal system knows he is playing the media flag so he can gain attention here. It's no wonder the media flocked to the protests beginning in the fall that he helped lead. He's working with the media to create this event, this publicity stunt, mm -hmm. false That's flag operation. Why, I used to always say that. Why did Steven Anderson get so much attention from mainstream media, international mainstream media? Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Are this is here? telling, too. Even when police showed up at his Aylmer home in November to ticket him for attending an anti-COVID restrictions rally, I thought he said he wasn't getting involved in politics in the past. And we're not trying to be anti-government here. In London, under the Reopening Ontario Act that restricts the size of outdoor gatherings, Hildebrandt's media savvy was on display. <laughs> they know what he's doing. They admit that, yes, he's just trying to gain public attention for the sake of tooting his own horn, just as Robert Breaker does. Um, same thing that the new IFB does. Uh, Bruce Mejia did the same thing recently, mm -hmm. which Brian talked about in a recent video. So, again, this shows Hildebrandt's public relations K-POC stunt that he keeps playing throughout this article. And the article keeps talking about it. In her 2003 ruling right there on the Aylmer spanking case that rejected the parents' claims their charter rights were violated, was the family state marriage licensed? First and foremost, Ontario Justice Eleanor Schnall gave a scathing dissection of Hildebrandt's publicity efforts. Again, their legal system is basically saying between the lines, well, if you're licensed by the state in your marriage, then we have jurisdiction over telling you what to do and taking care of your children. And of course, the legal system knows that this whole thing mm -hmm. is a publicity stunt by Hildebrandt. Then it goes on to say, Hildebrandt orchestrated the frenzy. Get that, he orchestrated it all. That surrounded the removal of the children from their homes, arranged for the media to be called and requested police to delay removal until reporters showed up. And then Hildebrandt's son took photos to provide to the media. So he's working with the media. He's in collusion with the media. This whole well, thing. Is... Yes, no, but see, they, they do it in such a way that it looks like he's not in collusion with the media, mm -hmm. you know, and but he's he's with social media. These guys can get this stuff out there and then it goes viral and whatever else. Um, you know, again, same thing that the new IFB has done for years. They'll do this thing if they run in with police and I'll smart mouth the police I'll smart mouth the Border Patrol and whatever else. And a lot of times the police officers are, you know, they're drawn into it ignorantly and they're going they're saying why are you doing this what do you i don't understand and, and whatever else just please leave and and then they start to get mad and that's what these goons want mm -hmm. it's just disgusting so continue here i think hack did some stunt like that too with a you know rejecting were, an offer they were no that was that, that's a different thing but jack hiles you know had this big media thing and whatever else where they were being accused of child abuse and whatever else and, and he did a big media event invited all the mainstream media they love it. They they just they adore this type of stuff. But anyhow, continue here. Then the sentence soon after Hildebrandt arranged for media interviews and photos of the quote unhappy parents in their empty home end quote and created a website providing the pictures, names, ages, and email addresses of the children, showing personally identifiable information, which I think is a major ethical no no. And again, you know, to win the minds and the hearts of the people who are watching this whole media event unfolding that Hildebrandt created for a certain purpose. Mm -hmm. Very telling. Then, um, and of course. He's holding up the Bible, just yeah, like Trump did. Exactly. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Continue here. Let's, let's get through The this. next one, uh, a media savvy sentence right there. An early mentor, Harvey Elk, Elk a retired minister of the church, German Church of God, said, you know, I didn't expect this from Hildebrandt, essentially. Mm -hmm. And Elk says he was leading a congregation in Mexico in the 1980s when Hildebrandt and his wife joined. And then Elk left for a congregation in Hamilton in the late 1980s, and the Hildebrandts followed. And as a result, 
help got Hildebrandt a job in a factory, you know, got him started, so to speak, off the ground, as they say. And when Hildebrandt joined the upstart Church of God Restoration in Aylmer in the 1980s, things changed. And somehow, Hildebrandt just becomes one of the church's pastors, according to Elk. And I think that's rather telling. So how does he go from a no name to all of a sudden pastor? Mm. You know? Yeah. Let's continue. Um, then under that statement, founder of the Church of God Restoration was Daniel Lane, who ran the church as a dictatorship. Hiles did the same thing. Ruling on how members should behave and dress. Hack did the same thing. And excommunicating anyone who disagreed with him. The Amish do that. Sounds like a combination of hack and Amish systems. Uh, he died in 2011, and an Ohio pastor named Ray Tinsman, Ray is a middle name, took over as chief apostle. Interesting timing. Then it goes on to say, after almost 20 years, right there, of little public attention, here we go again, he's craving the media attention, he popped back up on the public stage with his refusal, playing good cop, amid the pandemic to end drive-in church services last spring after Ontario adopted emergency orders. He saw the movement shifting mm -hmm. away from the initial start of the COVID pandemic, and he decides to jump on board and become the good cop in this whole scheme. Publicly, he focused on the rights of his congregants to go to their church parking lot, and check this out, and stay in their cars to worship. He stressed the use of masks and social distancing at his outdoor services. It's exactly what a lot of these these government church guys do. You know, they they I've, again I've seen this thing. They'll they'll do this whole thing and then they'll say, but we we will still continue to to obey the laws and whatever else. You know. It, or they'll say, you know, we're not for the the pokey pokey in the shoulder here. I won't say the V word on YouTube. Um, we're, we're not for that, you know, for the specific baloney virus thing. But that's not to say we're against, you know, other pokey pokies, you know. Play so, both sides. Yeah, let's. Next we have, um, though Hildebrandt argues his resistance is rooted in spiritual duty. It goes well beyond the spirit religious gatherings. Again, they're showing his pageant that mm -hmm. Brent has created. And it goes on to say in Beyond the Pulpit, what others say. Where's that? Go down below that photo. Okay. Um, Hildebrandt says right there in the second half of No Love Charges Against Him, the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms is representing him and, and other groups and will be filing constitutional challenges on all of the summons received. It sounds like he's waving the alt flag patriotism movement flag, mm -hmm. which is rather telling. Then you go down to the Church of God Restoration, professed to be separate from politics. Uh, retired Pastor Elk says, Amish claim the same thing. We're not involved in politics, and yet they do what they can to change the laws to be mm -hmm. in line with their beliefs. Um, okay, the next sentence that starts with I'm surprised by, it says they were really totally detached from politics, period. He says they did not feel it was right to pick up arms and go to war and on and on. Back in the beginning, before this whole pandemic began. Mm -hmm. But they wanted the media attention, so they raised the political progress banner. But it doesn't surprise Abe Harms, executive director of Mennonite Community Services of Southern Ontario. He says, I always feel that he thrives on controversy and thrives on crises. If there are no crises, he has to create one, Harms says. That's what Bruce mm -hmm. Mejia did. That's what the new IFB cult does. Yeah. They create false flag operations to get the public sentiment a certain feeling. Though a lot of Hildebrand's followers would identify themselves as Mexican Mennonites, the church itself is not based on Mennonite faith, but they showed, you know, Menno yeah. Simon as their so-called lineage, whose principles include separation of church and state. What are you doing creating a business entity, if you believe in that? And non-resistance and pacifism, 
just as the Amish believe and do, rather than confrontation. Then was this whole public relations stunt about if you're not yes. trying to confront? He seemed a little confrontational with the police officers. Mm -hmm. We won't get into that. Then we're almost done. Among the Mennonite community in which Hildebrandt was raised, concerns have been raised about what all he's doing at this point in time because it's odd the fact he's behaving this way now after all these years of just being silent, not doing anything mm -hmm. politically, so to speak. Then it goes on to say a member of the low German community in Steinbach, Manitoba, home to another branch of the Church of God Restoration. I thought they weren't a denomination, but yet another branch of this movement is affiliated and tied in with Hildebrandt's cult. And Hildebrandt's cult was formed upon initially by the Tinsman, a Church of God mm -hmm. member back in the past. Then the last part of this underneath that photo, um, Hildebrandt's brand of leadership is about adherence and control, the Steinbach source suggests, similar to the hack system. This is very telling. Quote, he is the church, he's the bishop, the pope, and his calls. You better go according to his calls. I think if there were even the slightest opposition, that would be detrimental to that person. End quote. Same with hack and the hack system. Many who know Hildebrand say they're hesitant to speak publicly for fear of personal or professional consequences. Wait a second. If they're uh, Christians, so to speak, why are the followers afraid to speak out against the so-called man of God, Hildebrand and his hireling ways? Um, the growth of the devout pastor's popularity during the pandemic is rather strange. They call it particularly paradoxical. I find it very odd. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say, Hildebrandt isn't acting on his own. Right there. Yeah, For now, that doesn't seem to matter. The right. next sentence, you just went above it. Go down. Wait, scroll down. The sentence that starts with "For now, okay. that doesn't seem to matter. So yes. Hildebrandt isn't acting on his own. He's acting in tune with the even more strident rallying cries of the Church of God Restoration Leadership. Who are the leaders above Hildebrandt beside the person who's above the 11 apostles or disciples? But the chief apostle, guy, yeah. 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 You have to wonder if there's some papists of different stripes um, that fall under the line of leadership, according to this article. Never. No, I wouldn't dare to say such Finish a thing. Up. Quote, resistance now more than ever is duty. End quote, says the November issue of the Church of God's newsletter, the Gospel Trumpet, part of the Good Cop Act. You go down a little bit more, one more sentence, where it says this isn't a fight of mere civil disobedience. Um, it is warfare against the very prince of darkness himself. Uh, Bogart, the papist that he is, affiliated with Andersnake, said basically the same thing. All Roman Catholic papists say the same thing. We're fighting against the very prince of darkness. Uh, you know, where Satan doesn't want us to do this action. Satan doesn't want us to do this. Well, it's funny because this cult is saying the same thing as Roman Catholic papists who say, Satan doesn't want us to do this action. Mm -hmm. Very telling. Well, that's it for the article then? Yes. Okay. So we'll go back to this. And, uh, absolutely crazy uh, so certain somebody's out cold um, well not cold he's warm but sleeping but just want to do a real quick live stream on this I just I, I saw this we you know she looked up that article and looking into other things and, and whatever else and and, um, and you know again secular article and they, they love this kind of thing because then they can make all oh, this, you you know, you're King, oh, you're King James only. Oh, so are they. What's the difference? No. Mm -hmm. And Brian Denlinger says that, you know, people are, certain people are lost and whatever. If you don't agree with them and things, it's if you don't agree with the scriptures, okay? That it's not the same thing. I'm not, I'm not running this type of stuff or whatever. And, you know, and these religious uniform type of thing, you know. 
we, we did a study on that years ago, you know, and, and uh, you know, and you have to wear black and white and, or subdued collars and whatever else. Come on, that's stupid. Um, so I just want to do a quick little live stream here uh, showing this whole thing. Um, if you run into these people, I mean, if you run into anybody and, and they're just a, a member of it, just say you're part of a cult. Don't be nice to them because they're, see, again, another thing, when, when you have <clears throat> interactions with Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, whatever, it isn't just they go to their system and they are taught and that's it. They are taught how to respond to you um, because that's how cults work. And so they will come along and they, you know, they see the outside world as a threat and whatever else. Uh, again, we talk to people, lost people and whatever else. I, I regularly have conversations with lost people. We're not afraid of talking to lost people. And I've never said you cannot listen to anybody but me or something. Listen to whoever you want to, but, you know, be careful, right? You, you listen to some new version preachers. They're going to deceive you. They're going to trick you. Um, you know, it's not the Holy Spirit that's going to be speaking through them with that new version. You know, listen to guys that preach from the King James Bible, whatever. I'll warn you if I know that they're bad. But it just, it boggles my mind how these people can fall for this stuff. It really does. So. And another thing I need to point out, I forget which page on their website it says it. I think it's in their doctrine. Can I show it real quick? No, oh, it's already, I'm not doing the, the screen share thing. Just okay. say what it was. Well, on their doctrine page, they said something to the effect of that they are not ecumenical. But yet in the article that I just read to you, um, they've been yoking up with all sorts of different people. Did I mention this thing of um, Hildebrandt starting a Twitter account in October, which posts photos of himself with Eastern Ontario MPP Randy Hillier, um, who's supposedly anti-COVID, you know, public health stuff. But then it goes on to say, and messages of support for Ezra Levant of the far right outlet Rebel News. And Hildebrandt also was to speak at a January rally called the Awakening World Truth Summit, which included author David Icke, a Freemason, who believes a hybrid race of aliens and the evolutionary terms for man is leading the world to slavery. And that Hildebrandt has become a fixture at Ontario rallies. So again, Hildebrandt is doing all these stunts to mm -hmm. get public attention. Yeah, they're igniting the right, just like I, I preached about. That's what they're doing. They're they're getting right wingers all upset and, and irritated and everything else. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I'll just answer your comment here quick. There's a YouTube channel called Truth Shock TV. It has a lot of videos on words being changed in the Bible. Do you know about this? It's called the Mandela Effect. Yes, I know very much about it. And do you have an opinion on this topic? Um, it's another psyop. It was actually formed by a witch, Hollywood mind control witch, Fiona Broom. She was the one that came up with this whole Mandela Effect thing. It is a lie. We did a whole video exposing it. I mean, I have I have Bibles up here from, you know, 200-year-old Bibles. They say the same thing as a modern King James Bible. Um, no. What they're doing is they'll, they'll, they'll take the confusion of, New versions, and they'll say, see, it says, um, you know, what's the thing? Bottles versus wine skins. Or the lion lays down with the lamb. The King James says, wolf. Oh, no. Or, you know, the, the lamb lays down with the wolf or something like this. Uh, no, no. You do the research, they're lying. And it's new versions, what the new versions are saying. And I show the proof in my Mandela effect. You know, videos. We were both actually in that. She did some research as well on that. Ties in with the mark of the beast and the whole movement there. So, um, big study. Can't get into everything here. Um, so, I think this whole Hildebrandt cult system is designed to negatively reflect upon real King James Bible believing uh, people who adhere to God's word, the King James Bible in all matters of faith and practice. I think this whole thing is a psyop to discredit our movement. Mm -hmm. 
the movement that we're part of. Yes. <laughs> We don't. We didn't found a movement. Okay? Right. Let's make that very clear. Uh, I'm using you know, their terms, you know. Yeah. So. Um. But yeah. Um. Uh, what was that one right there? I just saw. So, just there was something I was going to address there. Um, okay, not sure where I went to. Um, Do you know where I flowed from it? I might have noticed it. All right. Well, we're going to get going here. We can start doing question and answer stuff, and it'll be another hour. Um, so we aren't going to do that this time, but um, just wanted to warn about this uh, Church of, of God restoration thing. Very serious, very bad news. Um, yeah, stay away from that one, definitely for sure. I mean, we watched them, and I'm sure if you watched their messages, it would probably be quite uh, entertaining to say the least. Um, but, you know, new believers stay away from that stuff um that's my best advice to you so a um, bunch of different big studies coming up i'm finishing up some notes um as you can see back behind me here up that way right there is a little uh, monitor that i have there's wires that go over and my camera i have an old camera that i use maybe on the table back here but i i have an overhead camera set up that i can use which is what i did with the uh, most exquisite King James Bibles, and um, no, that's my other camera. Um, but uh, so I'm going to be doing some more overhead camera videos. I've done three already. <laughs> Sleeping. Um, so yeah. Uh, but a lot of big studies coming up. We're going to be doing some, I'll be doing some outdoor stuff here pretty soon. And um, I think that's going to be it for now. But I'm thinking about possibly doing a, uh, like a question and answer thing, answering post-trib questions. Um, so we'll, we'll see about that. I'll, I'll make some more announcements about that in the future. But I, just, I had to put together a live stream on this thing quick because it was just, Wow, uh, really bad, this Church of, of God restoration thing, man. Um, yeah, so, all right, we're going to get going. Uh, stay in the word, brethren, and keep looking for the Blessed Hope, which will be a sermon coming up. So, that's going to be it. We'll see you. Hey, you're weak. He's awake. Let's just say goodbye. Bye. All right.